this around the other way. This is a printout of your grades, including that last quiz you took. Um, and what's the first page is all of your grades. Quiz one, two, three, midterm, quiz four, and then quiz five, that last grade, uh, that you, uh, the last quiz you just took. And then paper one and paper two, for those of you who turned it in. That's the first page. And again, it's according to your student ID number. The second set of pages is the printout. If there's this column that says skipper, those are people who, having turned in their uh, both papers, are now eligible to skip the final. And then there's five columns that follow that. Those, that's your average figured out five different ways. So you find the highest of those numbers. That's what your current average is. That tells you what you would get if you skip the final exam right now. For everybody else who, that, if you're not a skipper, that just tells you your current average in the class. And a rough sense, therefore, of what you need to get on the final. Keep them, do better. Are the review sessions both in the same room? And what's the number? I can't read the room. Five twenty-three. Okay. It's one of these buildings. It's Isn't that this room? How far did I get in this chart last time? Five twenty-three. This room. This class. Did you get through talking about these classes? No. Did I talk about them at all? Oh. Talk about horizontal, ver uh, vertical, structural versus positional, Lau and Duncan? Yes. 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 All right, so I'll start off there. We did this one too. All righty. So let's officially start the class with reminders. So this is the last week of classes. So what's going on this week? If you have papers, I will accept them today. Remember I said I would prefer to have gotten them last time so that you would know exactly where you are in the class. The printout going around, as I just said, is precisely that. It's got a printout of your average grade. That's that second paper, second set of pages. Uh, um, if you did not do that and still have a paper to turn in, I'll take it right now. 
So if you've got papers that turn in, if you want to turn it in, please pass it up or bring it up. However, you will now not know whether you yeah, can skip the final or no, except for some people. I know you're good. <laughs> um, okay, so for everybody else, again, that printout with that column saying skipper on it, these are uh, the people who can skip the final exam. If there's a one there, that tells you you can skip the final. Then look across, find the highest average grade. That's printed out five different ways. That's different for everybody. I drop your lowest quiz score, so I have to figure out five different ways for people. That's why you have to sit and find the highest one. And that's your grade. Everybody else, as I just said, if you did not do the papers, if you don't have a one in that column, that's just your average grade going into the final exam, which is taking place in this class a week from this Thursday at 7.15 in the morning. But if you do not want to get up that early in the morning, you can simply take it either at 9.30 a week from today in this room, 9.25, 9.25 a week from today in this room, or a week from today two doors down, room 5.25 at 11.35, okay? Or you could do it on Wednesday at 1.45 in room 370. All that stuff I've said before, but that's just, as we're getting closer, people start taking it more seriously. Okay, so that's the stuff going on with that, the basic mechanics in the next uh, week. Any questions? Questions? Okay, at that, I'm not, I don't have time to go over your quizzes, the last two, four and five. Uh, during class time. You're welcome to come by during office hours and take a look at it. Uh, that quiz score, pretty low, frankly, the last one. So I did curve it pretty extensively. I forget uh, exactly what it was, like five or six points. I curved it on that last quiz. So the score you see there has been curved already. I'm not waiting until the makeups get in because this is the last week of class and you need to know where you are. Besides, the makeup usually come in much lower than the uh, uh, the people who take it on time. Okay. Anybody here still need to do makeup on that quiz number five? Got to get it done before Thursday. We get into the class day on Thursday. Okay. All right. So review from what we talked about last time. We talked about wealth versus income, economic inequality. Wealth is money you have, assets you have by way of ownership, income you by way of work. Both are unequally distributed, but wealth is much more unequally distributed than income. We know that the United States is currently the most unequal country in the industrialized world, and we keep getting more and more unequal. We are currently more unequal than ourselves. You have to go back roughly about a hundred years to find a time when we had this kind of inequality in the United States. Five reasons for that growing economic inequality. Change in the occupational structure, change in the economy, from manufacturing to services. Two, change in globalization. We become a much more globalized economy, shipping a lot of jobs, particularly high-paying factory jobs, to places like China. Okay, guys, back and back, please. I, you may be excited, but just keep that as a joke. As other people can't hear if you were laughing and carrying on. It's not fair to them. Next, third. Decline in unionization of our workforce. Those first three are the biggest, biggest single contributing factors to growing economic inequality, but also change in our family structure, growth in single parent families, and increase in marital homogeneity. Middle class people are now marrying middle class people, where upper class people are more likely to marry upper class people, etc. And then finally, cut in government services. Things like Section 8 and welfare have been dramatically cut back since the 1980s. Social mobility. We talked about a number of different concepts. Horizontal versus vertical. Horizontal sideways, you don't move up in the class hierarchy. Vertical, up or down. Then we talked a little bit about um, intergenerational mobility. The change between generations, comparing you to your parents and intra-generational mobility, where you start off to where you end up with your highest job over the course of your lifetime. Structural versus positional mobility. Positional mobility, the individual factors, education, 
intelligence, physical attractiveness, physical and mental health, a whole bunch of individual factors that affect your odds of moving up, structural mobility, the structure of the economy, the jobs that are available to move into. And we showed you a whole bunch of different little figures, a fuzzy cherry, a pancake, a diamond stripe, etc., indicating those were occupational structures of different kinds of societies. And we talked about the Blau and Duncan study of social mobility. It found in the 1960s there was a lot of it. More of it was up than down, but even then, in the best of times in terms of American equality, most social mobility was of a short distance. Best predictors overwhelmingly according to their research education, and then secondarily, the family. Since then, sociologists have begun to question some of those conclusions. We still have a fair amount of mobility, but an awful lot more of it now going downward mobility. And debate about whether education or family is more important. Okay, that's all from last week, right? Any questions about that stuff? Okay. All right, that is, who is that? Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton. Leading us into the discussion of classes in America. How many classes are there in this country? I don't know. I don't know. If you're a Marxist, how many classes are there? Two. The haves and the have-nots. If you're a Weberian, follower in Max Weber, how many potential classes might there be? A hundred and two. Because you can keep dividing money up. Money up, money up, divide, divide, divide. The one thing I do know, even though I don't know how many classes there are, is that class is important in your life chances. You should be familiar with that term from a previous conversation. Chances things are going to work out well in your life. Whether you're going to live to a ripe old age, whether your family will be intact, whether you're going to be healthy in the process, how many friends, kind of religion, access to education, where you live, divorce, all those things affected by how much money you have. So the book, and I will agree that there's five classes we'll focus on, but it's an arbitrary dividing line. Don't get hung up in the number of classes. Pay much more intent, uh, attention to the simple fact the impact is of economic resources. This is the independent variable. These are the dependent variables. We've got access to education being affected by how much money you come from. Same in terms of your family structure. Your attitudes towards life, what we're referring to as the social psychological resources, and then a bunch of other stuff, including politics. Michael? How can we get the... Oh, oh yeah, sure. Can somebody get the light, please? You can see this a little better. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's start at the top. Five classes, the upper class. Smallest class.